With lots of fanfare, Eastman Kodak has announced development of a new video camera with a recorder inside. Their secret new advanced 8mm videotape about the size of an audio cassette. Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. Today I want to talk about Codavision. In 1984, Eastman Kodak entered the home video market with the first ever 8mm camcorder. 8mm was invented in 1984 to allow smaller camcorders to be created for the home video market. I'm going to show you some of its features, demonstrate it to you hopefully if I can find one that works, coming up next here on Wayback Rewind. Giant film and still camera manufacturer Eastman Kodak is taking a giant step into the field of videotape and video equipment for the first time. Kodak is introducing a whole new video format that may change the state of the art in video. I'm here with my Kodavision Series 2000 camcorder. This is an 8mm camcorder. There were a consortium of 127 different companies that all invested in the 8mm standard, but of those, Sony and Kodak were the two companies that promoted this format the most. So for consumers, portable VCRs had existed since at least 1980. Video cameras, even before that. So there were people like myself walking around with portable VCRs and video cameras in the early 80s. But primarily, when you saw someone carrying a portable camera and a VCR, they were news reporters. And I often got mistaken for news reporters. In 1983, Sony changed all of that with Betamovie, the first camcorder that had the recorder and camera in one unit. JVC followed up in March of 1984 with the very famous GRC-1 compact VHS camcorder. Kodak produced in April of 1984 Kodavision. The 8mm tape is just a little bit larger than an audio tape. In audio tape, and an 8mm about the same size. 8mm is a little bit thicker. So many of these are barely functional. This one is barely functional. I can power it up and show it to you a little bit, but it doesn't really work that well. I bought two more. I'm going to unbox them live here. I always like to unbox these live so you can get my natural first reactions and see if it works or not, give it some suspense. More than 95% of American homes already have a still camera, and last year Americans bought more than 3 million videotape recorders. So in spite of the fact that its expertise has been filmed, Kodak decided that it was time to come out with a videotape camera that was real simple. Okay, let me give you a tour of the camera, and then we'll power it up. This camera is set up like every other camcorder that you've seen recently. It has all of the controls on the left-hand side, you have your standard camcorder grip on this side. This oval button here is your start stop button, what I call the go button. This button right here is your record preview. Back with tape based camcorders, you always ran the risk. If you rewound your tape while you're out in the field, you always ran the risk that you might record over something that you've already recorded that would be a disaster. So a lot of times what you would do is you would press this record review and if you saw the last thing that you just recorded, then you knew you were good. If you saw something that you recorded much earlier, then you knew you had to fast forward to get to the right spot. Getting away from tape-based camcorders was the best thing in the world for that because you never had to deal with that again. This is where you connect either the 10 meter cable or the cradle. And I'll talk more about the cradle in a minute. Video makers will appreciate the fact that you have a headphone jack, which they called earphone back in the days. It was more of something you stuck in your ear. I actually have old school earphones that I use because I'm old school. And you have an exterior mic jack here, which is nice. Back to the left side, you have an array of power controls. You have off and on. Then you have camera, playback, and cradle. Again with the cradle. I will get into that in a minute to talk about what the cradle is. Then you have standby and operate. Why you need a standby and operate? Well, this is a tape-based camcorder. So when you put the tape in, it automatically loads the tape around the spinning head so it's ready to go. If you're at an event and you want to turn the camera off for a minute for whatever reason, uh, without powering it down completely, you can put it in standby and it powers everything down, stops the head from spinning, stops the wear on the tape, and you can stay in that mode for a lot longer. When you're ready to go, you put it back to operate and it spools up quicker than coming in from powered off. Then you have white balance, auto, and preset. Something here you almost never see on modern cameras, at least in terms of having a physical switch. 
Here you have a manual color balance, positive and negative. Interesting Kodak being a camera company that they would give you that. Negative can put this camera into negative mode, which you think, what in the world would I use that for other than a special effect? One of the interesting things you could do with that is if you had some negatives that you could project that negative somehow, put it on a light board and shoot this in negative mode and you would actually see the picture in normal color. Auto and manual focus. That seems like a trivial thing. Actually, the 2400 cost hundreds more to give you automatic focus. You can see the automatic focus sensor here. The automatic focus sensor added hundreds of dollars to this camera, and that manual is how it came normally. Nowadays, we think of manual focus as a feature that they add back to the camera to give you control over it. Back in this day, getting automatic focus was a feature that you paid a lot more for. And then you have fade on and off. And I've talked about fade in other videos. Fade seems like a trivial thing to us today, but back when in-camera effects were the only kind of effect you had, being able to fade in from black or fade out to black was kind of a nice thing. And finally, this camera has a zoom lens. It's a seven to 42, and it even has a macro feature here. You have a ring that you can put it into macro and focus up much closer. When I power this up, I'll show you how that works. You do have an electronic viewfinder. It's black and white, of course. It's locked in this position. You push this button down and it swings up on out of the way and then locks in that position. The camcorder, as it is called, weighs about five and a half pounds and the tape lasts 90 minutes. To play the tape back, the whole camera goes into a cradle which hooks into your TV set. Close up the top. The way Codavision worked, for $1,899, you got the converter charger. It has all of the typical connections that you would see on a VCR. It's got the audio video out, the connections for the antenna here. I've got it hooked to my TV here so I can see what's going on. It's got the audio in and out, the antenna in and out, and the power. There's a cable that comes out of here that goes to the camera. They call this cable the 10 meter cable. For all of my friends that live outside of the US, you know exactly what 10 meters is. That's a very long cable. I've got the 10 meter cable coiled up over here to get it out of the way. First of all, let me show you. Here's where the 10 meter cable plugs in. It also says cradle on here. I'll get into that in a minute. But you have this 10 meter long cable connecting the camera to the converter charger. The theory here is that you connect the converter charger to your TV and people of the early 80s had all kinds of difficulties figuring out how to connect their camera to the TV. This manual here goes into a hookup guide. It shows your wonderful 80s TV and there are, I don't know, six or seven pages just devoted to how you connect this to the TV with every permutation of connection that you can imagine back in the 80s. And it's just pages upon pages of how to hook this up to your TV. And I'm going to get into why that's important in a minute. Hooking things up to your TV was not common in the early 80s. Most TVs only had an antenna input and you had to deal with that antenna input. And so you had to hook this up and then switch between camcorder and TV. So depending on whether you wanted to watch TV or camcorder, you would flip the switch. It is 8mm versus the half inch systems that are now on the market which allows for smaller camera design while at the same time incorporating a lot of new features like completely integrated recording and playback right in the camera. I'm always a little bit scared that it's going to eat my tape. So I'm going to power this up and load the tape and see what happens. First thing I need to do is plug in the 10 meter cable. I just love that it's called the 10 meter cable. My friends outside of North America can enjoy the fact that we actually do use the metric system here in the United States even though we prefer our feet and inches we know what a meter is we just consciously choose not to use it now let's power it up first thing you have to do is put this in power mode power this to on standby is blinking turn it to on and I left it in negative mode and Codavision is working. We are getting a live signal out of the camera. I've got it in camera mode. When you were using this as a VCR in your cradle, you would have to put it in cradle mode. If you want to play the tape, you have to put it in playback mode. Let's put it in playback mode and see if we can actually play this tape. I'm going to put it to playback mode. I'm going to load this tape. OK, 
Okay, after all that grinding, I'm going to watch it carefully to make sure the take-up reel is actually turning. This particular camera has a tendency to eat tapes. And it is tempting to play. This tape was actually recorded with my MVS Kodak camera. This is my 1984 car, ironically. This is a 40-year-old car that it's trying to take a picture of. Let's fast forward through this and see if we can get to a blank area tape. I'll see if it will record. I'm going to go back to camera mode. Okay, I'm in camera mode. How do you get it to record? Okay, I'm pressing the button and nothing is happening. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but... Do I have to press record? I don't think so. I wouldn't think so. For some reason, when I put it in record mode, it just unloads the tape. I don't know why. I don't understand that. I think it's safe to say that this machine does not work. The battery, of course, is completely dead. It uses a lead acid battery that charges from the converter charger. It will also charge inside the camera. So you could theoretically charge two of these. Close up the top, push the play button, and here we go. A Japanese company, Matsushita, will be making the equipment. The camcorder and cradle will cost about $1,900. Powered this up, I got nothing. And then, after doing the exact same thing three times in a row, it suddenly powered up in terms of camera mode, anyway. Like the first Code Vision, this one is actually lo loading the tape in record mode, and when I press the go button, it actually starts the tape in motion. Whether it's actually recording is anyone's guess. And this is the playback of what I just recorded. It's not very good, but it at least tried. So I would have to say this one is trying to work a little bit better than the other one. Right here for about two seconds, it got clear. Somehow the heads are clearing themselves. It's actually showing a picture. I'm moderately encouraged here.
Did that help? Hard to say. This is a video that I just recorded. It actually is playing back fairly normally. Cleaning the heads helped a little bit. Although for some reason it shut down in the middle of this recording. I don't really know why. Kodak officials say their new camcorder will not make the half-inch video recorders that people already have at home obsolete because they are used mostly for recording TV shows and watching movies. Using the old recorder and an adapter called the Tuner Timer, you could even do some editing. What's this with the cradle? I've talked about that several times. Kodak and Sony both had these visions that 8mm might someday replace VHS and Beta and become the new dominant format in home video. That never happened. Sony actually even sold 8mm VCRs uh, that looked like normal VCRs but used 8mm tape. Those are extremely rare. I never saw one in my life. To this day, I've never seen one. 8mm never became the dominant format for home video. It did coexist as a camcorder format for a long time, along with compact VHS and along with a mini DV later on. In addition to the 10 meter cable, Kodak provided a cradle for this thing, which the cradle looked like a giant oversized VCR almost. And you took the entire camera, plugged it into the cradle connection there and laid it down inside the cradle. And what that allowed you to do was to use this camera as a VCR. So camera number one is powering up inside the cradle. Camera number three, will completely not light up. It's completely dead. And the controls appear to be working. Okay, let's hook up a TV and see what we got. Apparently the tuner timer was an option. I don't know exactly how you remove it from here, but it looks kind of janked up the way the tuner timer and the cradle appear to be two separate devices mashed into the same case. Codavision 1 has a known playback issue, so I'm not surprised that it looks weird. But it is playing through the cradle, verifying the functionality of the cradle, and I can try it with Codavision 2 in a moment. I was able to successfully set the clock. The controls appear to be operating the way they should. Be curious to know if this tuner works, although lack of analog signals are going to make it kind of useless but it should work on modulated channels it would be possible if you so desired to link our system up to a half inch machine and dub off of our eight millimeter onto a longer half inch master which then could be kept as a longer family album the new camcorders will be available from dealers beginning in the fall the downside is that they were incredibly expensive. The Codavision 2400 with autofocus was $1,899. When I run it through the inflation calculator, it's about $5,600. And that's a lot of camera. If I ask you what consumer camcorder people are buying for $5,600, there's none. $5,600 buys you a Nikon D9, which is a full frame professional camera. Not too many consumers are buying those. Ironically, the same price as the Kodak 8mm film camera that they've just recently relaunched. The general consensus is that film camera is incredibly expensive. It's an extremely niche product, which I doubt they'll sell very many of them. Kodavision was an extremely niche product. This was not, I don't know how many of them they sold. I see a ton of them on eBay. They must have made a lot of them, but I don't know how popular they were. This was called 8mm partially because it was trying to evoke the nostalgia for the 8mm film format that I just talked about a minute ago. Kodak was all in on this format as a way to recover the nostalgia of shooting home movies and doing it on 8mm tape. Kodak themselves did not make these cameras. I get into arguments with people all the time regarding Kodak and digital photography. It's not like Kodak was asleep at the switch as everyone thinks. Kodak was primarily a chemical company, a film company. They made all of their profit off the film. They made their profit off the film selling and the film processing. For them to get into digital cameras was not really profitable for them. This camera was made by Masushita, also known as Panasonic in the United States, even though it has Kodak labels all over it. 
but Kodak did not make this camera. The tape was made by TDK, similar to the TDK audio tape that I was just showing you. So TDK made this videotape for Kodak. I don't know how much profit there was in this for Kodak, but certainly they had to sell this at a premium price in order to make any profit at all. But I know that nobody I knew back in the day had one of these. I never saw one in the wild back in the day. But as a camcorder format, 8mm was quite popular. Codavision itself, not so much. All of that being said, what's interesting about this camera is that it looks and feels pretty much like any other modern day camcorder, even though it was literally the first 8mm camcorder. I believe this was the third overall camcorder to the market, period. It was a very early design. In my opinion, this was the best of the three. Even better than their famous Back to the Future JVC GRC1. And the reason I say that is because the 8mm tape is superior, in my opinion, to compact VHS. With Codavision in the cradle, it now looks very much like a VCR, a very chunky 80s VCR, but a VCR nonetheless. All the traditional VCR controls, the tuner timer, which appears to be a separate feature that's added to the cradle as an option. And there's even a wired remote down here. I don't have the wired remote. I don't know exactly, never seen one before in life, so I don't know what it actually can do. This is a functioning cradle apparently. The biggest complaint in 1984 was at launch, eight millimeter tapes could only go 90 minutes. A 90 minute VCR didn't seem all that useful. The tapes very quickly got to 120 minutes and then they came out with a long play mode which would extend that to four hours. And eventually, in Japan at least, they came out with a three hour tape which long play would extend that to six hours. But a six hour VCR put this in line with VHS of the day. That would have satisfied the concerns of the people back in 1984. And then long play, I don't know if Codavision even has a long play. I do not believe it does. But later eight millimeter would have that. Despite the fact that Kodak and Sony said that eight millimeter was not trying to compete with the home VCR, Obviously, Kodak wanted to make life easy for you, and they wanted to make it easy for you to put your camera in the cradle and play back your video and give you the same functionality that a VCR would have with the tuner timer and the controls and even a wired remote. This could have theoretically replaced your home VCR, except for one thing. You could not play movies on this, not the, at least not the ones you rented at Blockbuster. Although 8mm movies were a thing, they weren't super popular, but they did exist. They did have some certain niches, like on aircraft. Certain aircraft had 8mm players. Well up into the 2000s, some aircraft had those until they went digital. I would show you one of those 8mm movies, but I don't have one. But I might have one in the mail as soon as tomorrow. Kodak had some serious financial difficulties in 1983. Its stock and profits dropped, and it had to lay off more than 3,000 people. Even with today's announcement, its stock dropped one-eighth to 76 and seven-eighths. But still, Kodak officials say with a new camcorder, they expect a strong recovery at the sales counters in 1984. Pat? Thank you, Donna. And there you have it. 
the CodaVision Series 2000 8mm camcorder, the first ever 8mm camcorder. And what did we learn from this? Kodak was the very first 8mm camcorder on the market, and yet today it's largely forgotten. And why is that? Mainly because Kodak brought this to the market and the reaction was mostly confusion. The general public was just recovering from the VHS versus Beta Wars. The general reaction was Kodak was bringing a third mutually incompatible product to the market. It was just confusing. People didn't understand what 8mm was trying to do. They didn't really appreciate how small and compact this camcorder was. The, the word camcorder was still a new thing. You know, you can hear it in their voice. They say camcorder like it's the first time they've ever Ever said that word before the camcorder as it is called people just didn't appreciate the camcorder at that point Sony and Canon did a much better job of marketing their 8 millimeter camcorders Kodak just confused the market with the cradle and trying to be a VCR even though it's not a VCR they kept saying it's not a VCR but then it is a VCR instead of learning their lesson and trying to make it more camcorder like Kodak actually doubled down in 1986 came out with the modular video system which was even more VCR like and confusing and even more obscure today and so Kodak basically faded into obscurity in terms of camcorders and never really latched on to what they needed to do in the home video market it turns out in 1984 their profits were very healthy mainly because the digital camera revolution was still a decade or more away and film sales were very robust and Kodak had yet to experience the decline and fall of film in 1984. In 1985 was the year that I worked at Kodak Park as an intern in the film department. Film was very much in play at Kodak. If Kodak were smart, they would have doubled down on the fact that they were a chemical company. Instead, they sold off Eastman Chemical Division into a separate company. That company is still in business to this day, doing very well. Meanwhile, Kodak stock dropped about 95% of the value that it had in 1984, and they went bankrupt in 2012. The story is a sad one, but it really was inevitable that film was going to die one way or the other. Kodak's business was in film, so the only choice they had was to transition themselves to something else. What they should have done was not try to pursue a market in which they were never going to win. There you have it, the Codivision 2000, the very first eight millimeter camcorder. I actually have a working 40 year old camcorder. It's pretty amazing just to look at it and Ouch. look at that beautiful 1984 quality. So if you found this helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.